my YouTube friends. I've been away long enough. I uh, still can't uh, talk perfectly. I have a bad cold right now. But I wanted to do a little video here about meters. Uh, the first meter is a Heath kit with V7A. And that one um, I restored first and it works great. Great for uh, IF peaking and things like that. But I wanted something a little bit bigger. So I looked at ePray and um, I got myself a few of these. Um, the RCA WV98C. So anyway, so this one works great and I thought I would never have to do any better than this because even though my eyesight is going bad, um, that one's still plenty big enough. Here, here's my hand. Okay, this is the small one. This is the big one. Well, it just happened so that I was uh, going from antique store. I have like three in the neighborhood uh, within like say 10 miles that are really big. And um, you know, they have about 100 booths in each one of them. So I go in there once in a while. And I went to this one the other day, and lo and behold, it was something there I've never seen before. I thought they wanted too much money for it, so I figured I'd offer them less. And here is what it is. Now look at the WV-98C. Look at the Heath kit. Now you won't believe this thing. This thing is a monster. It's a Hickok. 209A. Okay. It tests resistance, capacitance, ohms, milliamps, and this meter is huge. Look at it in comparison to the WV98C. Put my hand in front. This thing's a monster. It's going to be fantastic if I get it going for peaking IF coils. I don't care how bad your vision gets. I mean, you know. So, uh, excuse my cat. So I'll do a close-up of the uh, unit, and you can see all the different parts. This is the meter. Just model 209A. Here's the ranges and the functions and all the jack connections on the right. And here are the controls on the bottom. And one of the probes even has a 6AL5 in it, that one right there. It's got a vacuum tube inside of it. And I haven't looked into the information, but I have a feeling it's some kind of high frequency um, uh, detector. But I'm not positive yet. And also this meter is supposed to do decibels as well. But the main reason I'm making this video is because I don't know a darn thing about the Hickok 209A. I didn't know it existed. And I was wondering if any of you folks out there know anything about this meter, how well it potentially could work, how accurate it is, if it's calibrated correctly, and if it's worth um, putting the time and energy into it. Um, I might as well tell you what they wanted for it. They wanted 99. And then I looked on eBay, and the only one that I saw that was like this, was the one that was uh, really looked bad, had problems. Um, nothing as good a shape as this. And uh, they wanted 35. That was almost that much for shipping because the thing is a monster. So I figured, all right, I'll talk them down to 75 and see if they bite. And they did. They came back and they said, okay, we'll take 75 for it. So that plus tax. Don't have to worry about or praying about shipping and um, 
so I just brought it home safely. And uh, I'd like to know all of your opinions on this. Um, I think it p could potentially be a really great asset and something that I could use. But whether they are really, um, well, it is a Hickok, so I would imagine, I mean, it's well made. And I just hope it's well engineered and um, it, um, it's worth it. So uh, any information, any feedback that you could give me on this would be greatly appreciated. And uh, I guess before I end this video, um, why don't we take apart the meter and so we can look inside. And um, I saw pictures on the internet already about the internal construction of the Hickok and it's just what you'd expect from a Hickok. It's the dressing is nice, everything, the quality is nice. So the only thing I don't know is because I've never opened it, if it's been molested or not. So um, oh another thing too, I guess it's really hard to find, though you can make them, is that probe because it has the 6AL5 inside. You can make it, you know, you can uh, use a plastic tube, maybe PVC, tube base, 6AL5, get the right components and put yourself together one, but I'm lucky it came with it. Haven't taken it apart and see what kind of shape it's in, but I'm sure one way or another it's fixable. I mean, it's just capacitors, maybe a resistor or two in the tube, so, and maybe a ceramic. Uh, yeah, the odd thing about this, I might as well show this while I'm um, thinking about it. You can see at the end of that probe, well, at least I hope you can see, let's see if the camera stays in focus. I can't quite tell. Maybe I better hold it further away. There's a hole in there. Now, uh, I just did a cursory look at the manual. I guess there's an adjustment in there for a mica capacitor. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, that explains the hole. And it's threaded, so I could suppose you put a uh, rod on there with a thread for the pro part, but that part was missing. I could make something. So um, when we come back, um, we'll show you the inside. Well, I just finished taking out the screws. Even the bolts. I can't even call them screws, so they're more like bolts. I think they're quarter inch. They're huge. Anyways, I got them all out. So for the first time, let's um, take this out. Um, there's the cut out line cord. Um, let's take a quick cursory look here. I don't see anything that's been changed yet. <laughs> Even the batteries, no, of course they've been changed, but they corroded as much as you would think. But. Uh, only one of them leaked really bad, just this one. And I don't really see any corrosion on the holder. Uh, this, I'm probably going to have to treat the connector, but that's about it. Um, everything looks original. So, there it is. Maybe I can give you a better look by looking at this. Um, let me prop it up with something. Now that zoomed in a little bit better. You can see the construction there. I don't see any components that have been changed, modified, or anything. 
another thing I just noticed, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in the camera. Well, let me tip it up. I remember this battery symbol when I was a kid. Remember the Ever Ready Kitty label? This one right there. So this is probably, I don't know when they changed labels, but it's probably been in there since, I would say, 60s. Let me tip it up also so you can see other aspects of the uh, chassis. That's the tubes. I guess this thing has five tubes, including the one in the probe. Let's see if that's true. Let's see. One, two, three. Um, anyways, that could be a potential really nice uh, piece of equipment. Um, I think another thing I'll show you guys is uh, also the uh, inside of that uh, probe with the tube in it. Let's take a look at that. Yes, I was totally wrong about this. I thought in the manual somewhere, on one of the forms, it said it was an adjustment for a mica cap. But you can see on this end, it's solid. So I'm not sure what the. Oh, I see. There's little slits here. You put a rod in here, and then a nut goes over here and then cinches down on the rod. So that's what it's for. Okay. Let's take apart this probe. I loosen four screws here, two here, strain relief here, and I believe I'll just push up. All right, there you go. There's the 6AL5. Little tube socket. My cat's trying to help me. One resistor, a little paper cap, and that's about it. So that's the internal construction there. I don't think I've ever seen a clear tube base before. That's interesting. And uh, anyways, a little short video on my 209A. And um, if you folks uh, know any information, like I said before, on whether it's worth working on this or put it, just put it back up on ePray and get what I can get for it. Um, the only thing I want to say is this, and I'll come back to the video and say it. Okay, the thing I want to say about that meter is one thing I did read in a lot of forums and things is the people who had the Hickok 209A regretted to this day that they ever got rid of it. And it sure reminds me of this, and this is why I'm showing this. This is my Kenwood TS830S. Circa about 1983, maybe, 85, somewhere around there. It's half ICs, transistors, and it's a hybrid. So it has uh, finals, uh, that are tube, two finals, push-pull, and um, also a driver tube for it too. And to this day, this is one of the finest rigs in the world. And um, I will never get rid of it. I will never part with it. Everybody who got a new rig and got rid of the TSA-30, regrets it. And I get the same feeling about the Hickok 209A. So I'm thinking, even if I get no feedback, unless it's really, really critical, I'm probably gonna restore it. And keep it around for a while anyways. And um, that's about all I wanna say about that. I'm very sorry that I haven't been making videos. Most of you know that I've been really, really sick and 
almost died a couple of times and uh, but I'm back now I'm learning how to talk uh, that will get much better because uh, what's coming down the road but um, I hope you can understand me okay um, I am feeling better but now that I am feeling better my wife is talking about remodeling this, remodeling that, remodeling this, doing that, doing this. I already did the outside of my house a few years ago, but now it looks like I might be torn away to do the inside. So, uh, pray with me that I can do some more videos. And, uh, because I would really want to do more videos. And, and um, finish up my, um, uh, VT-71, which is uh, the chassis sitting over here, Bob, <laughs> and uh, it's looking good. I'm ready to get under there and and uh, finally finish that up, but I'm doing a lot of things around here, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry that I've been gone so long. I never meant to be gone this long. But I'm also very lucky just to be here. So, um, hopefully look for more videos from me soon with me talking even better, um, with a better attitude and more production out of me. <laughs> if I don't get pulled away. So, anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate all the videos that you've been making for me. Take care. Bye. Hope this video wasn't too boring.